light trim, please, Charlie. Sure thing, Luke. And what do you have today, Glendon? A light trim, please. Hmm. Sure about that? Wouldn't you like to see your ears again? No, sir. Just a trim. A trim. Boy, oh boy, that's a lot of hair. Don't the uh, boys ever tease you and call you a girl? Smitty, just trim it for him. Okay. It won't even look like he had a haircut. Hey! Well, I can't trim your hair with your glasses on. Mr. Smith, will you please give them back before you ask me to look in the mirror? That's <laughs> your sure thing. Uh, where's your grandma today, Glennon? She usually drops you on your way to shopping. She wasn't feeling too good. Lucas brought me. It was time for my trim, too. Hmm. Pastime, I'd say. Your ears are pretty well hid, too. Wouldn't you say, Charlie? Yeah, I would. Both you guys, just cut the hair. Yeah. <laughs> Could you help me, please? I'd like the number of Smitty's Barber Shop in Webster Groves. Well, how's it look? My glasses, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Thank you. Mm, not bad. You about ready, Glennon? Oh, yeah, he's all done. Looks just about the same as when he came in, don't he? Hello, Barbershop. Yeah, he's here. Luke, it's for you. Hello. Lucas. Grace Bader. Brendan is with you, isn't he? Yes, he's here. Oh, I thought so. I thought I remembered that. Grace, is something wrong? I don't know what's come over me. It must be the fever. I don't seem to be able to keep... Hold of my thoughts. Did you call a doctor? Just tell Glendon. I didn't get a chance to bake a pie. I wanted to bake a cherry pie. <laughs> Grace will be right there. We're on our way. Let's go, Glendon. What's the matter, Lucas? Your grandmother's not feeling well. Let's go see what we can do for her. Right. Thanks a lot, fellas. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. I'll do it. OK. Thank you. Grace? Grace, can you hear me? It's Lucas. Lucas. I'm afraid I'm not well. Grace, you're burning up. Why didn't you let me know you were this sick? I didn't want to worry you. Why didn't you call a doctor? I don't need a doctor. I've had the flu before. I don't think it's the flu. He's here. He's downstairs. So little. His mom and dad. Halfway around the world. Dr. Herschel Littman, please. It's an emergency. some things she'll need in the hospital. Does she have an overnight bag? Now, what do you think we ought to put in there? I think her best-looking, prettiest dress for when she gets well. What do you think? Well, the blue one's her favorite. Good. We'll pack the blue one. Grace Bader. Spelling? B-A-D-E-R. 
sex? Female. Married? Widow. Husband's name? Glennon, what was your grandpa's name? Grandpa Bill. William. Patient's maiden name? I think it was Bush. Spelling? It's like the stadium, only without the C. Is she going to be all right? I have no way of knowing that. What was her mother's maiden name? Beats me. Is there anyone who can give us that information? Is it that important to know her mother's maiden name? For identification purposes. Suppose we had another Grace Bader admitted. What then? You could call her Grace Bader number two. We're only interested in number one. How can we find out what her condition is? You'll have to ask her doctor. Now, do you know if the patient carries any major medical or hospital insurance? She pays all kinds of insurance, but I don't know what. Do you suppose you and the little boy could look through her papers at home? It's really quite important that we have that information, as well as the name and address of the person financially responsible. Glennon, do you know where your mom and dad are right now? Oh, sure. Somewhere in Pakistan, I think. They sent me a wooden elephant. We'll look for the address. Please do. We really must have it. Dr. Golf to admission. Dr. Golf to admission. When can we see Mrs. Bader? Oh, you can't. She's in ICU. In what? The intensive care unit. Well, there must be visiting hours. Yes, but only for close relatives. This is her grandson. Children under 12 are not permitted at any time. Are they permitted in the waiting room? Yes, of course. I'm sorry. Dr. James to intensive care. What? Dr. James to intensive care. Lucas? Yeah? How long are we going to have to wait till we find out about my grandmother? I don't know. Hey, why don't we sit down? Intern to emergency. Intern to emergency. Dr. Coburn to a telephone. Hi. Hi. Dr. Coburn to a telephone. What happened to your head? I didn't fasten my seatbelt. What's the matter with you? Mm, nothing. It's my grandmother. They got her up in offensive care. Lucas. Hi, Hirsch. How is she? Can I talk to you a minute? Sure. Glennon, why don't you stay here? I'll be right back. This is Dr. Lippman. How are you, Glenn? Fine. How's my grandmother? We're taking good care of her. Can I borrow your friend here for a minute? Sure. I'll be right back. Lucas, it's not good. She has double pneumonia. She's running a high temperature. And at her age, if she'd just come to me sooner. She didn't want to leave her grandson. Well, his parents had better get here real quick. Is she dying, Hirsch? She's strong. She's got a good heart. It's a plus on her side, and she's receiving a lot of medication. Now tell me, does she have any other family? None that I know of, no. But what are you going to do with the boy? He'll stay at my place till this is over. Then what? I don't know. Well, what are you going to tell him? The truth. Come this way, please. I'll check with you later. See you. Good luck. Thanks. Same to you. Nurse to admission. Admission. Friend of yours? She's nice. But her boyfriend has a heavy foot on the brake. Lucas, what did Dr. Lightman say? Your grandma's very sick. I already knew that. What does she have? She has double pneumonia. And it can be very serious. How long do you think she'll be here? As long as it takes. Hey, you can stay at my house, and we'll get word to your folks. I just hate to leave her here. So do I. But she'll get better faster here than she would at home. They have a lot of medicine, a lot of people to take good care of her. Will she die? She might, Lyndon. the cablegram, Lucas. Well, there's a time difference. It should be at the embassy sometime tomorrow morning. Well, what if they're not even at the embassy? 
My mom and dad are always in villages giving people shots for immune... Immune... Immunization. Yeah, that kind of stuff. It's supposed to help little kids from getting sick. Well, it's part of their job with the International Health Program. It's too bad they weren't here to give Grandma a shot. You think they'll come back when they get the message? I'm sure they will, Lennon, if they can. You think they'll take me back with them when they go back? We're dealing with some pretty serious diseases. I think they feel better with you here, going to school and living with your grandmother. I mean, if... if my grandmother doesn't get well. If she doesn't get well. That's something you should talk over with your parents. I sure hope they get that message. Hey, how are your guppies getting along in their new surroundings? Well, George seems to like it. But Martha seems a bit homesick. Now, who are George and Martha? Okay, now, this Google here is George, okay? Yeah, hi, George. And see the one with the big tail? Yeah. Okay, now, that's Martha. Hi, Martha. I'll get it. Okay. Hi. Hi. Are you from the hospital? No, I'm from the college. Isn't this Lucas Tanner's house? Kelly, <laughs> come on in. And I knew you before you had a doorman. <laughs> <laughs> this is Glennon. He's going to be living with me for a while. Glennon, this is Kelly. Hi. Hi. I thought you were from the hospital. Is somebody sick? Glennon's grandmother. She might be dying. I'm sorry. Uh, Luke, we can catch the play another time. Oh, the play. I completely forgot it. Luke, it's all right. I understand. I really do. I should have remembered to at least call you. Well, you've had a lot on your mind. Besides, I can do without another evening of experimental theater, especially after the one we last saw, Macbeth in Modern Undress. Well, didn't you like Macduff and the Buff? <laughs> Too talky. <laughs> Glendon, we're really not that crazy. Hey, have you had dinner yet? Nope. Forgot to feed you, huh? Well, listen. How would you like a good home-cooked meal? Sure. So would I. Me too. Except I can't even boil water. Oh, swell. <laughs> Any suggestions? Yeah, let's go out for pizza. Does Glendon like pizza? Does a squirrel like nuts? He happens to be the pizza-eating champion of the world, right, Glendon? Well, if you don't mind, I think I'll stay here, just in case. In case what? The hospital calls. I'll check the hospital and see how things are going. Can you do that? You bet. Hey, look at that fish. What a beauty. Look at those colors. What do you call a fish like that? George. George. Martin. Hello, I'd like to inquire about the condition of a patient in the intensive care unit, please. Yes, ma'am. But really, these guppies just won't leave the goldfish alone. Hello, this is a friend of Mrs. Bader. Could you tell me how she is, please? Could you be more specific? Yes, ma'am. I understand. Thank you very much. The hospital said her condition is stable. What does that mean? It hasn't changed. She isn't any better? She isn't any worse. Right. Which means that we can go out and eat our weight in anchovies and pepperoni. I'll even spring for a Jeroboam root beer. <laughs> How's that, Grandy Glennon? Wait, only... Do you suppose they'd have anything a fish would like? Martha has a touched up bite.
Lucas, do you think you're building a boy a lot? All the time. And his mother, too. And you'll never forget them, even though they're dead. No, I'll never forget them. I'll never forget my grandma, either, if she dies. I was looking at everybody at the restaurant, and I got to thinking. Someday, they're all going to be dead. And then again, I thought, someday I'll be dead, too. It's scary. That's why it's better to think about life and how to live it the best way we can. Will you wake me up if the hospital calls? You bet. Good night, Lucas. Sleep tight. Hey, should I leave this light on? Nah, I don't need it. That's only for babies. Okay. Good night, Tiger. Hey, Lucas. Lucas? Yeah? I think you better turn it back on. I, uh, might get lost on my way to the bathroom. Good thinking. Yeah, I'll see you in the morning. Pleasant dreams. That's what my dad always used to say. That's what I always used to say to Chip. Good night, Lucas. Good night, partner. Bed? Yeah. He's probably asleep already. I made some coffee. Instant, though. Thanks. Luke, at the pizza joint, when we were sitting at the table, mm -hmm. you, uh, you were looking at Glendon as though he was someone else. Was I? Mm -hmm. Sometimes he reminds me of Chip. There's no real physical resemblance. It's a, it's a look he gets, the way he holds his head sometimes. Did you know that you reached over and held my hand? The way a husband might hold his wife's hand if they were out together? Thanks, Kelly. For what? For being here. And for letting me goof up your evening. I've had worse evenings. A lot worse. And with people I didn't like. Yeah, but you really walked into it tonight. I know it helped Glendon to have a, a sympathetic woman around. And me too. I owe you an evening. Well, sir, I'll be only too glad to collect. Luke. That was good night. just a little bit needed. It's a good feeling. Nothing's changed since I talked to the hospital. She's getting along fine. Your grandmother's very much alive. They're with her every minute. Did the doctor call? Nobody called. That was so real. You're just having a nightmare. You're dreaming about some things you're afraid of when you're awake. I'm still scared. No, sit up with you till you fall asleep again. Tomorrow, your folks might call. What if I don't? What if I never hear from him and Grandma dies? Glendon? Where's my dad? Where's my dad? I think I smell something coming. 
Good morning. Good morning. Hey, how would you like your eggs? Uh, scrambled? Sunny side? Poached, please. Poached. I didn't get that in home ec. Glenn and I haven't read that yet. Oh, it's okay. I'm just looking for the funnies. Well, can't you look for the funnies without tearing it all apart? Whoops is right. I've seen neater looking newspapers in a pet shop puppy window. I'm sorry, Lucas. Do you have any pineapple juice? No. But I got some orange juice. Is it fresh? No, does it matter? My grandmother always buys pineapple juice. I'll put it on the grocery list. Hey, how about some bacon with your eggs? Canadian bacon? No, Missouri bacon. No, never mind. Well, for a kid who goes around messing up newspapers, you sure have special tastes. Well, while I'm cooking breakfast, why don't you go out and take Bridget for a run? I thought the kid next door always did that. Glendon, you're the kid next door. Well, you used to pay me to walk Bridget. I'll still pay you. Gee, I don't know if I want to be living help. Listen, if you can't find Bridget's leash, I'm going to find somebody else to do your job. I think I saw it in the living room. Lucas? Yeah? That was a bad dream last night, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I'll prove it to you, Glennon. Uh, Mrs. Bader's condition is stable. I know you're supposed to say that, but somehow it isn't very reassuring. Is Dr. Lippman around? He's in with the patient. I'll hang on till he comes out. I don't know how long that's going to be. I'll take a message. I have a boy here who is badly in need of either some reassurance or some flat-out truth, and I'm not going to hang up the phone until I get some kind of answer. Just a moment, please. Dr. Buchanan, to attend Doctor? Dr. Buchanan. Yes? It's Mr. Tanner. He insists on talking to you. Thank you, Des. Hello, Lucas. Hirsch. I've just about had it with this, uh, the condition is stable. Now, we need to know more. Lucas, what can I tell you? Grace is just about the same. What does that mean, Hirsch, about the same? Glennon's having nightmares because he doesn't know what's happening with his grandmother. Now, tell us something. Lucas, she's lucky to be alive. It didn't go so good for her last night and this morning. She's just about the way she was when she came in here. For that, we can be grateful. Now, you tell the boy. We're doing everything that we can. We want her to live. Thanks, sir. I'll tell him. I guess they haven't gotten the cable yet. Maybe they moved. Maybe they're not even in the same country. Well, why don't we check your grandmother's mailbox tomorrow and see if they've sent a new address? They wouldn't just go someplace and not tell anybody where they are, would they? No, they wouldn't. School tomorrow. You better go up and get ready for bed. There's a monster movie on TV. Hey, ah. Space? Hey, what are you trying to work up another nightmare? No. But if I have to have one, I'd rather have it about monsters. Listen, you've had a busy day. I think you'll sleep straight through now. Go on. I'll be up in a minute. Okay. Operator, I'd like to place a long-distance call to Washington, D.C., please. Person to person to Mr. Delbert Wardlow. I don't have his address or his phone number. If you can't find it, try the State Department. They should be able to help you locate him. Yeah, he's in the Far East Division. Huck should have come to Mother Hen. I am going to point... Hey, you brush your teeth? Yeah. Wash your face behind your ears? Sort of. 
Sort of. Mm -hmm. Sleep tight. Lucas? Yeah? I don't think I should go to school tomorrow. Why not? Well, my mom and dad might call and there wouldn't be anybody here. Well, they know I teach at Truman. Dr. Littman knows how to reach me, too. It just doesn't seem right for me to go to school with Grandma in the hospital. What do you think she'd say about that? Well, she would say... Well, well it just doesn't seem right. Good night, partner. Good night. See you tomorrow. Pleasant dreams. I'll try. Okay, uh, what do you get from the expression, uh, lucky to be alive? I'm lucky my parents met, or I wouldn't be here. You know, it sounds more like something you'd say if you'd lived through a terrible experience. Or illness. Right, right, it means surviving. Then could stamina be an element of luck? Sure. Excuse me, Mrs. Hold it, hold it. Mrs. Blumenthal sent me over here to give you a phone message. From the hospital? No, the elementary school. Boy named Glendon went out for recess and never came back. Kind of worried. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, would you ask Mrs. Blumenthal to send somebody else in to take over my class? Okay. I'm sorry, gang. I'm going to have to leave. Uh, somebody else will be in to take over the hour. Oh. See you tomorrow. Bye. Dr. Hyatt, an emergency. Dr. Hyatt. I'm sitting down over there, please. Dr. Clement for telephone. Dr. Clement for telephone. Excuse me. Did you see a little boy go past here? The little boy that was with you on Saturday. That's the one. No, I haven't seen him. Which way is the intensive care unit? Uh, it's down there. The children under 12 are not permitted. He did not go down there. You don't know Glennon, do you? Uh, you're not a relative. Uh, you can't go down there. Come back here. Is this your little boy? Sort of. Well, you shouldn't let him roam all over the hospital. Please, will you take him downstairs? Look at her, Lucas. What's wrong with her? It looks like something out of a monster movie. It's okay, partner. They're taking care of her. Will you please get this boy out of here? The nurse, may I speak to you for a moment? Brendan, stay right here. That boy is scared. It's his grandmother in there. His name's Glendon. Thank you. Glendon, it's not as terrible as it looks. See that mask over nose and mouth? Yeah. That's part of a respirator. Pure oxygen is pumped through there so she can breathe more easily. What's that bottle hanging upside down? It has nourishment in it. She can't eat like you and me, so we feed it directly into her bloodstream to keep her strength up. What are all the wires for? The TV monitor for the nurse's station. 
It shows us her heartbeat and other vital signs. And that way, we can tell how she's fighting her sickness. Is she going to get well? That's one question I can't answer. But her condition is stable. It sure doesn't look stable. It looks awful. My girl, hello, my girl. How are you? Hey, tomorrow, Glenn, and I'm gonna have to explain to your teacher what happened. Oh, George. Well, she's not used to having her students split at recess, you know. Why didn't you tell her what was on your mind? Well, I couldn't, Lucas. Wouldn't have done any good anyway. Would have been better than just taking off. Teachers have been known to help. Not my teacher. Hey, how about a glass of milk with a shot of chocolate in it? Great. certainly take less time. Well, Del, if there's any way to get word of them. Great. Del, thanks. I really appreciate it. You let me know? Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Is that the doctor? No. It was a friend of mine who works for the State Department in Washington. He's been in touch with the embassy in Pakistan. He says your folks uh, are off in the boondocks. They didn't get the cable. But there is a way to get through to them by shortwave radio. Dell's hoping to make contact with him. You mean it? He's gonna try. Did you hand me that pencil and paper? Sure. You're feeling better this morning, aren't you? Hmm, a little bit. But gee, Martha was a good fish. You know what I think? What? It was the move from next door. Shook her up too much. She just wasn't as strong as George and the others. Poor Martha. Oh, it reminds me of that turtle somebody gave you that time with a painted shell. You remember that? No. I never had a turtle with a painted shell. You must be thinking of your little boy. Yeah, it was, Chip. I got mixed up for a minute, Glennon. What are you writing? Oh, it's a note to the cleaning lady. Fifteen after. I'm going to be late for school. No, you're not. I'm going to drive you this morning. And you're going to be late for school. No, I have assembly first period, no classes. I'm going to your school and talk to your teacher. Do you have to? Well, don't you think she deserves an explanation for what happened yesterday? Oh, boy, peanut butter and jelly. For a lunch. Anyway, Lucas, you don't explain things to Ms. Haley. She does all the explaining. All you do is listen. Ms. Haley? Ms. She married? I don't know. I never heard of any miser. I look on the playground as an extension of the classroom. Glendon was supposed to be engaged in constructive group recreation. Well, instead, he opted for alienation. In my opinion, it was not a viable alternative. He left the school grounds without permission. Exactly. It was a deliberately destructive anti-group action which I cannot condone. Do you know where he went? It doesn't matter. He was willful in setting himself apart from his peer group. As a result, my authority was challenged, and the principal raised holy hell. Oh, I don't really expect you parents to grasp the full significance of the delicate balance of intramural relationships. I'm not a parent, only a proxy. Well, all the more reason for you to take an interest in trying to reconstruct the child's attitude. I really don't see what's wrong with this attitude, Miss Hanley. Everything. Isn't it obvious? No. You can't be serious. 
He broke the rules. He's a prime offender. He's a little boy whose grandmother might be dying. I'm sympathetic with that problem. But that is quite apart from classroom consideration. Baloney! What did you say? Baloney. It's a euphemism. The only consideration in the classroom is the kids. What I'm wondering about is what happens to them with that weight you hang around their neck in the name of sweet primary education. Who do you think you are? I'm a teacher. But there are times when I wonder about some of us. Mr. Tanner, I don't have to sit here and Glenn was to... right. You don't listen, but you should. Because if those kids could get through to you, you might be able to complete your education. Glendon's grandmother is that close to dying. She's more important to him than all of your, your constructive group recreation. He went to her because he wanted to see her, maybe for the last time. He left without permission because he knew you wouldn't even discuss it with him. He left out of need and out of love. And if you can't understand that, Miss Haley, then I feel sorry for you. Because, lady, you're in the wrong job. Is this the way you talk to your students? Only if I think they need it. Do you think I need it? What do you think? Teaching at the grade school level isn't easy. Sometimes it's damn difficult. If it's that way for you, can you imagine what it must be like for your kids? I'll take Glendon's personal problems into consideration. Is that satisfactory, Mr. Tanner? How do you feel about it? I hope you don't come back on parents' night. I don't know if I'd be able to take it. No, but if you have a proxy parents' night, look out. I will. Be sure of it. said we'll be right there thank you what's the matter lucas what happened dr Lippman wants to see us at the hospital right away why the nurse didn't know we can't be too serious or dr Lippman would have called himself right right let's go, go. take this down to cardiac this morning Right. You know, I warned that nurse not to scare you, but they're so used to not giving out information, they fail to give it out when they're allowed to. Does that mean she's better? You bet she is. Her lungs are clearing up. She's showing steady improvement. How's her fever? Well, it's gone down considerable. Glendon, your grandma's getting well. Honest? Do you mean it? Cross my heart. That's the wrong side. Oh, really? <laughs> That's probably why I flunked anatomy. When can we see her, Hirsch? Well, right away, if you like. She's awake. She's been badgering me to bring you two in there. Come on, let's go. Can we? Well, of course. Why not? After all, I am the doctor. Oh, incidentally, if anybody should ask, you're her big brother and uh, you're her 19-year-old grandson. Okay? How oh, nice. Hi, Grandma. Glendon. I was just dreaming about you. It was the nicest dream. How are you? A little weak. Is he bathing himself, Lucas? You bet. We've been having quite a time. It hasn't been too painful for you. No, it's brought back some nice memories. I'd almost forgotten what it was like. We've been trying to contact your daughter and her husband, but they're off in the wilderness somewhere. It's 
it's useful. What they do, it's important. Mm -hmm. But they don't know what they're missing. Do they, Lucas? No, they don't. All right, Grace, that's enough chin wagon for a while. Close your eyes. Go back to the second part of that dream. No, you two get out of here. I have sick people to look after. Goodbye, Grandma. See you soon. I love you. I love you, Glenda. Good night, Grace. I love you. Hello, my girl. Hello, my girl. Mr. Price, a hamburger. Yeah, I brought you a hamburger. She takes it straight, Glennon, no mustard. And see if she's got some water. We'll take her for a walk before we get ready for bed. Wait. I'll get it. Tanner residence. Long distance. Trans what? Oceanic? Pakistan? Yeah, I'm him. I'm Glendon. Hello? Mom? Where are you? Uh-huh. Well, sure. I hear you real good. Grandma's gonna get well. I was just talking to her in the hospital. Dad? Boy, I miss you. You're coming home? Both of you? That's great, Thank <laughs> you.